Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. At the start of this process, I told you that I'd be trying out a whole range of Red Seas products. Some of them I've used previously, while others are completely new to me. Well today is an easy one, because we're going to be talking about Red Seas NO3PO4X, or what most of us refer to as Nopox. As you know by now, I don't give an opinion on something unless I've used it for a period of time. Well this is a product which I've been using for years, and I love it. It's essentially a form of carbon dosing, and is a mixture of both different carbon molecules, as well as trace metals necessary for the complete reaction, without having to deal with any incomplete or partial byproducts, which can become toxic over time. This solution, when dosed correctly, is designed to reduce nitrate and phosphate in a controlled manner by utilising naturally occurring bacteria, which already exists within our aquarium. This bacteria lives in areas of the tank which have very low oxygen levels, such as inside the rocks or deep sand beds. Nopox essentially gives the anaerobic bacteria a boost, which enables it to reduce nitrate by turning into nitrogen gas. This then gets released into the atmosphere. The phosphates are also absorbed by the bacteria, which then multiply and are then skimmed out by your protein skimmer. This is why having a protein skimmer is essential when it comes to dosing Nopox. The reason I've been using this as my method of nitrate reduction on all my tanks is that it's very precise, in comparison to some other methods. And although it does require you to add something to your tank every day, it's just become part of my daily feeding schedule, and it only takes a couple of seconds. I remember years ago when I originally started using it, my nitrates were around 30, as I was only using water changes as a form of nitrate reduction. I followed the instructions to the letter, by using a higher dose initially, and then gradually reducing it as my nitrates came down, and I've now been using the same dose for years, which maintains it at a set level. It's important that you don't become lazy when it comes to carbon dosing, as some methods can significantly harm your tank if used incorrectly, by stripping the water of all nutrients, therefore a precise method is very important. For this reason you should also be testing your water weekly, to make sure that none of your parameters are getting too low. There appears to be this myth that trying to get your nitrates and phosphates to zero is beneficial for your corals. I believe this myth stems from the days when it was virtually impossible to do so. Now that we can actually take them down to zero, we are gradually learning just how important some of these levels of nutrients are. Having said that, we also know that it's entirely possible to experience levels of these which are too high. I like to maintain my nitrate around 5 and my phosphate around 0.04. One of the ways that high nutrient levels can affect our tanks is that our corals host symbiotic zooxanthellae algae. This beneficial algae uses light to photosynthesize, and the process creates carbohydrates and both amino and fatty acids. As the algae produces more than they need, they then pass these nutrients onto the coral. This is a symbiotic relationship though, where in turn the coral provides the algae with nutrients, nitrogen compounds, phosphate, and CO2. The algae also has another trick up its sleeve. By absorbing light, they essentially shade the inner delicate layers of the coral from UV radiation. In the wild, the zooxanthellae population is controlled by the amount of nutrients the coral give them. Whereas in tanks that have uncontrolled higher nutrient levels, there is an abundance of these nutrients that they can utilise. This gives them the ability to multiply out of control. This increased population is what you're seeing when your SPS corals turn brown, as they're shading out the coral's natural coloration. As you now know, there is a lot more going on than we can actually see. Controlling these nutrients in an acceptable, stable, balanced range is one of the key parts of success in this hobby, as once you've achieved this, you'll see a noticeable difference with regards to both growth and coloration. Of the whole project which I'm working with Red Sea, this is one of the parts I'm most interested in. I remember, while at Interzoo 2018, I was asked why I use a combination of both Nopox and an additional phosphate remover on my other tank, and I was informed that Nopox will be able to manage phosphate by itself. As I'm sure you know by now, during the length of this project I'm only allowed to use Red Seas products on the tank, therefore other than this, and water changes, I have no other form of nitrate and phosphate reduction. I'm very interested to see the long-term results, especially from the phosphate perspective, as there appears to be a general feeling that Nopox only does nitrate reduction. I look forward to sharing the results with you in a later video. At the moment, 
the tank is very lightly stocked, so I'm only dosing 3 mils per day. Therefore, in theory, at this stocking level, this 1 litre bottle should last almost a year. I hope you enjoy watching my video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time.